Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining our uh, IRICAD webinar series. I'd like to introduce our team again. My name is Graham Hutchinson I'm with Nelson Irrigation here in Walla Walla, Washington. Mike Noftal, uh, independent consultant in Washington State. Steve McCoon uh, with Nelson Irrigation in Walla Walla. Jo Vivier is in New Zealand. She's with IRICAD and is in charge of global support. And we have uh, Ignacio Del Campo, Nelson Irrigation in Chile. Here's our complete uh, webinar series, and we are on number four today, which is the design process and design options. Uh, please use the question and answer feature of Zoom. Uh, and we will try and ask you, answer your questions. Para los asistentes de habla español, se puede hacer preguntas por el menú de preguntas y respuestas. Trataremos de contestarlas en español. So today we are going to be spending quite a bit of time in the design menu. This is the design menu in IRICAD. And we will go through design parameters and connectivity check. We will go through the different options of zone design, uh, what they each do, what they each mean, and when to use them. Uh, the zone design configuration uh, is a table of parameters that's a very useful table to allow you to uh, configure the designs and get the results that you want. These are the options here that uh, determine the management of an irrigation system and how you combine different blocks together uh, results in the different flow rates in the main line. So that's a very important area that we will look at. And then naturally we will look at the design, design options for mainline design. Both uh, uh, zone design and mainline design have these options. Analyze the uh, LP, which stands for linear program, velocity design, and detailed analysis. And here's a little bit of an outline on what, what they do. Two of these options uh, give you pipe diameters and give you the results and pressures and flows. And those are LP design and velocity. So obviously you need a layout, you need blocks and mainline and things like that. But once you have the layout and you use either LP design or velocity, IRICAD will give you the pipe diameters <clears throat> And, and the, uh, the results. The other two are really analysis parameters, analysis methods. So you have the layout and you also have the pipe diameters determined. Then you can use analyze, either analyze or detailed analysis, and they will give you the hydraulic results, pressures and flows. So two, two of those options give you diameters. The other two, you need to have the diameters specified in order to use them. So now we're going to uh, look at an irrigation design and run through some of these things. So here we have an IRICAD uh, screen and we have a design on there. It's about 20 acres of solid set sprinklers. I'll turn off the uh, image so we can see things a little bit better. And before we get going, uh, this is laid out, but nothing has been designed. Uh, there are no pipe sizes, the layout is there. Let's look at parameters first. And here under hydraulic parameters, we have the velocity limits that we've set for zone pipes and for mainline pipes. Zone pipes are the pipes that are downstream of a control valve, and mainline pipes are the pipes that are between control valves and the water supply. We also, in the bottom right of this window, have uh, the usage code for U checked. And that's something that was introduced in version 16, which allows us to use zone pipes, not lateral pipes, in the laterals, and they won't be used in, in the manifold pipes. We're going to uh, run a connectivity check next. And it's necessary that everything is connected in IRICAD in order for it to run. And after we get that message, everything's okay. 
I'm going to delete this piece of uh, pipe between the water supply and that junction and run that again. And we get four errors and each valve has a, a symbol that it's not connected. If you get multiple errors of connectivity, it's a good indication that something is disconnected close to the water supply. So I'll just undo and, and put that pipe back in. And then perhaps uh, I will delete one segment of pipe. And run the connectivity again. And we see that we get one symbol. So one symbol, usually the problem is at the location. If you have multiple symbols, the problem is usually fairly close to the water supply. And I'll just uh, redraw that piece of pipe back in there. Next, we need to make sure that we have pipes available to do the uh, design. And I'll uh, import an image here to show the pipes. So here are the pipes that I have flagged available in the database. And the three quarter and one inch are the ones that are, are uh, flagged as U, which means unconnected spray line. And if we look at the I'm just trying to find irrigation areas, there we go. If we look at the uh, the blocks, we can see that I've removed this connected check here, and that means the lateral pipes are unconnected, and that means that we we have a piece of pipe and a sprinkler, a piece of pipe and a sprinkler, rather than a continuous spray line. And with pipes flagged as U in the database, they will be used. The real advantage of that is before this came along, we had to have them flagged as Z pipes, which meant at the end of the submains, it was possible to have one inch pipe at the end of the submains, and it was always a manual uh, process to change those to a sensible size. Also like to uh, show the allowable variation from the database. And this is from the database. And we have specified for the sprinkler that we're using in this design that the flow tolerance is 5% above our nominal pressure and 5% below. And that's approximately plus or minus 10% of pressure. And so that's what's set in the database. And again, if we, if we looked at the uh, if we look at the uh, block parameters, we can see that we've got 35 psi set here, and so that that is our starting point for the pressure in the blocks. So let's run through a, a design. Uh, we can see that we've got some elevation here. And we'll show the digital elevation model just so we can see that a little bit better. And there's some slope across there. And if I expand that and exaggerate it, we can see that um, in this right-hand corner, we, it climbs up. So we've got some elevation here. I have put the valves about two thirds of the way up the slope. That was a manual decision when I laid this out and that will help a lot. And you can see that it's running uphill here, but we do have some lateral pipes running up in this direction. So let's look at the different options that we have for uh, design. And we're going to use velocity design first. In the zone design configuration, I'm going to turn off one, two, and three. So we just work on zone four for the meantime. And that is, 
the uh, this zone here with that elevation up here. So let's run velocity design on that and we'll see the result. We get a notice that we've got some sprinklers out of range. Uh, let's look at this and we can see that our lateral pipe pipes are three inch and we've got two inch here almost all the way to the valve. We can select this valve. And we can show the minimum and maximum pressures for that valve. So here we have our maximum pressure, 39 PSI. And here we have our minimum pressure, 29 PSI. And it's really outside the range that we wanted. The uh, design by velocity just uh, gives you a result based on velocity. It doesn't use anything else. Another thing that we can look at is the pressure here in this pipe. And I use the information icon a lot to check pressures here. And we can see that the pressure is quite low at the end of that lateral pipe. It is a little bit higher than the minimum pressure we've got shown for the sprinkler. And that is the reason for that is the sprinkler is above ground. So that elevation takes out pressure. And also there's some friction loss in the riser, which also takes out pressure. If we look at the reports and the zone design reports, and the summary one is one that I use a lot, we can see that um, this was our uh, design window, that plus or minus 5% of flow was almost plus or minus 10% of pressure. So we wanted to stay within 31.7 to 38.45 PSI, which is the variation of 17.5%. We're above that. We're below our minimum, above our maximum, and our variation is 25%. That's the sort of thing that a design by velocity will do because it only uses velocity. It doesn't use elevation to give you a result. It will calculate the pipes based on velocity, and then it will analyze the result with the elevation in mind and give you the accurate result. I'll clear those markers. Now let's uh, design by the linear program method and see what sort of results we get. The design is complete. We, we got no, we received no notifications of error problems. Again, if we show the minimum and maximum pressures. We can see that the, the maximum pressure is still fairly close to the valve, 38 PSI. Now the minimum pressure is over here at almost 32, and our range is much better. We have three quarter inch pipe, there's some one inch pipe here. Uh, some segments of that two inch are now three inch pipe. If we look at the reports, we can see that we are within our limits. Uh, our percentage is below the, um, the window of percentage. Our minimum pressure is above our re required minimum. Our maximum is below our required maximum. So we get a pretty good result there. So I'm going to clear those markers for those limits. And now I'm going to run through the design for all these blocks. I will go back into the zone design configuration and turn the other blocks on. And we'll run through the design for all of those four blocks. Okay, I think I have a duplicate pipe here, the one I drew in. See what it is, if I can find it. I'll turn the uh, elevations off.
and we'll try that again. I'm going to zoom in and run that again and we have a duplicate pipe detected and so it should be right here. And now we're okay. So we notice that uh, down here we have some one inch pipe. Most of the lateral pipe is three quarter inch. I'm going to look at the reports. And we can see that uh, for all our valves, the result is within the limits that we wanted. And this is one of the beauties of the linear program method, the LP method. It takes into account the lengths, it takes into account the elevations, it takes into account the cost of the pipes, the different diameters, uh, and it takes into account the velocity limits that you set. And it gives you a solution that's within the window that you want, but it's also an economic solution. And you can see for all of these valves, our limits are within the limits that we want for those designs. Having said that, uh, sometimes we want standardization in a design. We don't want to mix up uh, lateral pipe diameters. Here we have three quarter, here we have one inch. So let's try and uh, change all of those uh, one pieces of one inch diameter to three quarters and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to use the change window tool or the select window tool and so select the whole design. And then I'm going to use uh, what we call our change type and that's under modify change type. And I also have the icon, I've customized my menu a little bit and I've put it over here. So I click on change type and I come back and I click on one of the segments that I know is one inch and I'm going to change it to three quarter. I'm going to match the pipe at three quarter and change it. And now all of our one inch is changed to three quarter. I know that I'm going to have a bit of a pressure problem coming up here. So I'm going to manually change a couple of segments of three inch to two inch. It's bigger than the manifold or something needs to be, but it's more desirable to have consistent lateral diameters uh, than um, drop down here too early and into two inch. So we've made some changes. If we go back to the reports, the reports are not going to give us the accurate data because they were based on the initial design. And so we have to use analyze. And this is the method where you have the layout, you have the pipe diameters, and you're able to do the analysis. And it's going to give us a few warnings, but we're going to see how significant those warnings are. If we go to the reports, zone design reports and summary, The first report, we've got a little bit of a red flag here. The pressure is marginally above the maximum, but it's okay. It's only 0.3 of a PSI. Uh, zone two is a little bit similar. Zone three, uh, we're 0 0.02 PSI below the minimum, so I think that one's okay. And zone four is, we're a little bit above what we want. And that comes back comes down to a designer decision. Do you want to simplify things for the installation and management in the future? Or is it okay to have one sprinkler uh, with a little bit low pressure? And so for now, we'll make the judgment call that that's okay. It's not too far out. It's really only half a PSI so out. So we're going to accept that.
So now let's take a look at Uricad's logic and just see what go is going on. And to do that, I'll import another image. And we set this block up to run at 35 PSI. And so although this block in the image is not quite the same shape, it explains what Ericad does quite well. The starting point is 35 PSI, and that's the, that's the pressure that comes from your block parameters. So if we open up the block parameters, I had set the pressure to 35 PSI. That's the starting point for the design. And Ericad uses that and expands a window outside of that. And that window comes from the allowable variation in the database which was set to plus or minus 5% of flow, which is approximately plus or minus 10% of pressure. So we get this window here. And that is what uh, Ericad is going to use, 35 PSI. We also note that the flow at 35 PSI is 1.27 gallons per minute. And so that's the flow that Ericad uses for the calculations. A couple of things to note here. If I click on this piece of pipe in this right-hand corner and go to my information icon, we can see that the pressure is about 31 PSI um, and the flow is 1.27 because that's the nominal flow based on 35 PSI. And that's how Ericad calculates the friction loss and reports the pressures. The real pressure is a little bit lower than that. Sorry, the real flow is a little bit lower than that because the pressure is lower. But that's how Ericad does the, the design by velocity, design by LP, or the analysis. It uses the, the flow at the pressure that you set in the parameters. And this is very similar to the way that you would do it with a spreadsheet or a lot of other software uh, calculate the pressure variation and the flows within a block. The same thing uh, is happens with a drip tape block. It's a little bit different. And I'll just pull up an image here. If in the tape block parameters that you set, say we're going to do a tape block design, if you have the inlet pressure to the row set at 8 psi, that's kind of the starting point from where Uricad works. It will start at 8 psi to an inlet pressure. It will go down a little bit along on that for inlet pressure, up a little bit to the valve on inlet pressure, and it will lose pressure down the rows. The starting point is 8 psi, and it comes from your block parameter window, and the allowable variation comes from your database, which in this case was 10% above and 30% below in pressure. So in this case, we could have a valve pressure of approximately a 9 psi and uh, the lowest end of tape pressure, maybe five, six PSI. And that's how Ericad does the, the, um, the analysis. We have analyzed these, these blocks. Let's uh, take a quick look back at the uh, zone summary report. And let's note the uh, pressures and the flows. So we're about 249 gallons a minute and just over 40 PSI, very similar for the second valve and the third and fourth are, are similar also. Now what we're going to do is go back into the zone design configuration and we are going to fix the downstream valve pressure at 41 PSI for all the blocks. So why should we do that? There are a couple of reasons. One, uh, Ericad does the LP analysis or the design and floats the pressures in order to, order to give you a solution that's within your design parameters and is an economic solution. And it's a mathematical model. So it comes up with downstream valve pressures like 40.66, but no one installs a, um, a valve and adjusts the pressure to 40.66. Also, uh, these pressures vary a little bit. And again, it's just a good idea to have an irrigation system where you say to the people, okay, set the valve pressure 
all of them to the same. In this case, it's going to be 41 PSI. The other reason why we're going to set the valve pressure is that we're going to use what we call detail analysis to do another analysis, a final analysis on this design. And that in the zone design menu is detailed analysis. And what that does, and I'll, I'll uh, pop up another image. So in this image, I've set the valve pressure to 40. In our design, I've set it to 41. But what this does is forces this pressure at the valve through the system, through the zone. And it starts off by using our 1.27 uh, GPM at 35 PSI to calculate the friction loss. It then incorporates the friction loss into the result, and it knows that the pressure down here is a little bit less and the pressure up here is a little bit more than 35 PSI. So it does another run through. And it's an iterative process until it arrives at exactly the uh, pressures and flows in the design. So let's run through that. And it takes a little bit longer because it's an iterative process. We are getting a few error messages or messages on pressure. And now we will look at the results. We can see that we uh, fixed the pressure to 41 PSI. Our flow has changed a little bit uh, because it's worked out the exact flows and pressures in the design. It's fractionally above. We can see that our variation has actually got a little bit better. Uh, and that's because the friction loss to some of the lower pressure points, uh, the flow rates are lower because of the lower friction, so the friction loss is a little bit less. And so generally, when you run detailed analysis, uh, it gives you a more accurate flow, and it does improve your results a little bit. And in the case of a tape design, it will do the same. It will give you a better result, and it will improve your EU um, a little bit over a standard analysis. It's something that I do after I have uh, completed every design. I, I do a linear program design. I make some pipe changes to simplify things, make it a little bit easier for installation. When everything's okay, I go to the zone, zone design configuration table. I set my pressures and I run detailed analysis. And that's the end result that I, that I use and I don't make changes after that point. We can click on, for example, this pipe down here in the uh, right right hand corner of the design. And if we look at the information icon, remember our flow under standard analysis was 1.7. Now we've got an accurate flow of 1.19 and our pressures are a little different, actually a little bit higher. So the other different um, design options, and we went through LP design, velocity. Uh, we made some changes, we did analyze. Once we were comfortable with all the changes, we fixed our pressures and ran detailed analysis. So velocity was kind of the odd one out in this process because I showed it to be, uh, showed it to give us a result that wasn't so great. And so uh, the question is, why is it there and when, when would you use it? There are times in a design where LP will not give you a solution. It can't come up with uh, a design that satisfies your requirements. And sometimes it's easier for those blocks to run velocity design, get a solution, manipulate things manually, change some pipe sizes, analyze it, and then you may not get quite to the uh, design standard that you want, but you make a judgment call on, on whether that's uh, good enough or not. And so that's when I tend to use velocity dot design. Often it involves elevation uh, and situations where it's just not possible to achieve the window that you have. We'll spend a little bit of time going through the zone design configuration table before we move on to mainline design. There are some really useful things here. 
Flushing is something often done with uh, drip tape and that will be involved in another webinar. Allow for minor losses. Uh, that's something that takes into account the losses um, along the submain that are due to the T's. Not through the T's into the lateral, but I think the best place best way of explaining that. If you have a grommet fitting and there's a grommet protruding into the submain pipe, that minor loss includes the losses caused by that grommet as the water travels down the submain. This one here and this one here are when you use connected spray lines and if you want to change the, if you want to have more diameters uh, in a lateral, the maximum is three. If you leave it at one, it will default to one. If you set that to three and then check this, it will change the outlet, di the pipe diameter at, at a lateral. More and more we use unconnected pipes when you want telescoping laterals, so I don't use these ones too often. Number of submain sizes. Uh, sometimes the submain will start off in four inch, go to three inch, two inch, one and a half, and one, and you could limit that and just say I want three and it will, will limit that. I tend and then it will maybe just go th four, three, two, but often it might only go four, three. I tend to leave that as zero. I tend to give uh, the linear program more room for a selection and make changes after the fact. And particularly in uh, unconnected designs like this one is here, I use that U flag in the usage and that means that I eliminate the possibility of using small pipe diameters in the submain and I can turn them off for zones. So uh, again, if I uh, pop up this image of my available pipes, because I'm using U for the smaller diameters, I don't have to have Z enabled for for them. And then this means that two inch will be the smallest zone pipe included in the manifold. So that's something I tend to use more than limiting the, uh, the number of submain pipes in the configuration. Downstream pressure we've talked about. Uh, minimum allowable pressure. If you want to override the database, you can do that. And if you put a check in here, you can put some minimum maximum pressures. If you've got a block that's uh, well above, that you that has elevation and you can't achieve a solution, you can say, well, for this one, I'm going to allow between 30 PSI and 40 PSI. And Iricad will use those limits, not the limits that you have in the database. So that's a quick rundown of the zone design configuration table. It's something that I use a lot, particularly in big designs, uh, with with complex elevation, I may uh, not draw all the blocks. I might uh, lay out all the sprinklers and rows and then start carving things up. And then I might start uh, designing one or two blocks at a time and work through it. Uh, if you've got a very large design and you have all these enabled, you might be getting some error message and it takes quite a long time for Ericad to run through and then you need to address the errors that you get. So in those situations, I might do one at a time or two at a time. So it's a much faster process in working through blocks. So moving on to mainline design, we have our blocks designed and we have our main lines drawn. They are not, um, not designed yet. And so, the first thing we need to do is to tell Iricad how we're going to run this, this irrigation project. If we run all the valves together, the main lines are going to be a lot larger than if we run, run one block at a time. And we have some options in irrigation management to, to enable you to do that. So if you want to run everything together, you would select this one, which is one system flow, all zones to one system flow. and an example of like of this might be for frost control. So you're doing design for frost control. Everything has to run at the same time. We can see it comes up with one system flow. These are the blocks listed. And in this column B, you can see it always refers to system flow one. 
Now we can run the design, and again, the options are similar. I want Uricad to give me the, design, the pipe numbers. So I'm going to use LP. And here we have a result. Um, and we've got some large pipe, 12-inch pipe. We can look at the um, system duty report. And we can see that we need just over 1,000 gallons a minute and 46 PSI going into the main line to satisfy that system. We can also look at pipe sizes. If I click on this uh, main piece of main line pipe here and use my information icon, we can see the flow. Uh, we can see the friction loss. We can see the velocity and the inlet pressure and outlet pressure. That's a tool I use a lot to check things out as I go along in a design. So now let's, uh, what I'm going to do is clear the management. So Ericad doesn't know how to manage the system anymore. And I'm going to say that um, this is just an irrigation project. And I want every zone to have a unique system flow. So we're going to have four system flows or four sets, as some people say. So we have four sets, and here are the valves listed. And each valve is on a separate set. One to one, two is on, valve two is on set two, valve three, set three, and so forth. And now uh, we can run the design. Again, I will use the linear program. Had a few error messages, and I can look at the uh, reports. And we see that we're about 250 gallons a minute and about 45 psi um, going into the main line for each of those uh, blocks. Block one is the closest and the lowest, and so it has the lowest pressure requirement. Uh, you notice some flags of velocity when I was running through the design process, and just to tell you that I'm not hiding anything, um, we'll look at this pipe here and look at the information. And I fixed that pipe size as 4-inch because it's going into a 4-inch valve, and our velocity is a little bit higher than our 5 feet per second in the main line, and that's what's throwing the flag for the velocity errors. So I'm, I'm pushing through those errors pretty quickly, but that's the reason why I, I know where they are. So again, uh, let's try that again. We're going to clear the management. And so Eric had, doesn't know how to manage that system. And this time we're going to set it up with, um, we want to combine some blocks, and let's say it's a cooling system, and we want to run half the property at a time. And so I want to have two system flows. And this is an option in management that I use most frequently, where I set the number of system flows that I want. And then it's a graphical way of allocating system flows to zones. So I'm going to select this one and this, this one, assign it to zone, to, sorry, to system flow one. Okay, and we can see the pressure, the flow here is listed. I'm going to click on this one and this one and assign it to system flow two. That is listed, and then I can save as net and exit. And if you've got a large design with a lot of blocks, it's a really good graphical way to, to uh, assign the, the blocks to each, each system flow. And we can draw a management symbol that we can put on the plan and so the farmer, the grower knows how to run that system. Blue runs with blue, um, red runs with red. And now I can design that system, again, using uh, LP design. And we can see, go to the reports. And we can see the pressure and flow required.
While I've got uh, this system running, I'm going to open up the water supply. And here we've got to check, calculate running costs for, water, for the water supply. So that's checked. And so I'm going to look at our bill of materials. And I haven't done the fitting selection, so it's just the pipe and sprinklers and valves that are going to be considered at this point. But it gives me a breakdown. So here we have the total capital cost of the system according to the prices in the database. Based on the economic parameters that we've got, uh, the running cost of the system is about $1,563 a year. And according to our interest rates and terms and things like that, the financial cost of that system is added and our total running cost is $3,871. And so this is a really good way of presenting to the farmer the, the annual cost of running a system. And let's look at uh, some of these pipes, for example. And we can see that this is a eight inch pipe and our velocity is about three feet per second. So we say, well, what's gonna happen if I bump that um, velocity up a limit, up, limit up a little bit? So in the design parameters, I'm going to change my maximum velocity setting in the main line to six. In the economic parameters, you can see where I've put the uh, operating hours per year, the um, pump efficiency, the energy cost, and the economic term in years. And this is data that ERICAD uses to calculate the, the annual cost in terms of the financing cost. But I, I, I bumped my velocity limit up to six feet per second. I'll run the design again. And we notice that our eight inch pipe is now changed to six inch. And our velocities have gone to 5.2 feet per second. And so you can say, well, that's pretty close to five and maybe we can tolerate that. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the costs. So we can go to the bill of materials. Our cost for the system has gone down about $1,000. Our running cost has gone up in terms of energy. It's gone up about $100 a year. But because the capital cost of the system has gone down, our total annual cost uh, of running the system has gone down about $100. So, um, if the farmer's happy with having 5.2 feet per second in the pipe and a little bit higher pressure at the pump, then this is the most economic system over time. So that shows you um, some of the things that ERICAD can do in helping you show different options to, to, um, to the customer. I think one other thing that I'll show you before we uh, close out is in the um, mainline design reports, ERICAD gives you the flow and the pressure required at the pump. And this is the pressure going into the mainline. You need to add any friction loss for filter stations, valving, suction lift, all those sorts of things. But that's the pressure that needs to go into the mainline. There is an option in the water supply to fix the pressure. And let's say I have 50 PSI available. And so I'm gonna fix the pressure at 50 PSI available. And now I'm going to analyze that system. And look at the reports. We'll go to the system duty report. And we can see that the water supply pressure is as we fixed it, 50 PSI with the flow. Another report that I, I use quite a lot is this mainline summary report. And this tell me, tells me my safety margin at each valve. So for system flow one, I wanted 41 PSI downstream of the valve. Due to the valve that we used, we needed 41.7 PSI upstream of the valve. So there was, 0.41, there was 0.7 PSI 
uh, friction loss through the valve. But this is the pressure available upstream of the valve if we have 50 psi at the water supply. And so, so for those two valves in system flow one, that's the, um, the safety margin. And for system flow two, uh, our safety margin is a little bit less, but we, we need 41.7 upstream of the valve. We've got one psi more. So that's the result of uh, fixing a pressure at the water supply, running the analysis, and then looking at the safety margin. You can produce this report without fixing the pressure, but one of these, the, the, the critical situation, IRICAD will put the uh, re required pressure the same as the available pressure. So perhaps in this case with system flow two, it will have 41.7 PSI and the valve pressure available and then give you a, a pressure that's lower than 50 PSI required at the main line. So that's been a, a fairly quick run through the design process and the design option. Um, as the, this will be recorded, so you're very welcome to download the uh, the the um, recording when it's available, or watch the recording when it's available. And uh, I need to share another screen. There we go. The, uh, the next webinar coming up is tomorrow. It's uh, 11 a.m. tomorrow, and it's on irrigation blocks and subdivision tools. Mike Nofter will be uh, presenting that uh, webinar. And it's a really, really good um, information series on, on the powerful block tools and subdivision tools in IRICAD. So uh, we will uh, hopefully see you tomorrow and uh, continue on with our schedule next week.